everyone. I'm doing my monthly manga reading log for July. I read 85 volumes from 18 different series, and as usual, there will be timestamps below. So instead of going through and talking about each series, I'm just going to share a few of my highlight reads from all the series that I read in July. I always feel really proud of my reading log videos after I finish them every month, but as I've been doing them this past year, I've found that I kind of don't enjoy preparing for them each month, and then I get stressed during the month trying to keep track of everything with my notes, and sometimes when I'd like to be reading, I won't start a new series because I'm thinking, oh, if I read this series, I'll have to add another series to my log when I haven't even put down my thoughts for the last two series I've read. And then I just end up not reading and I continue to stress about it. So in July and so far in August, I've just been kind of carefree reading what I feel like reading. I've still had a semi-structured but flexible monthly TBR and I think I'm gonna just continue this way depending on how it goes. So please give me some feedback in the comments if you're interested in watching a video like this, just sharing what all I read for the month and then talking about just a few highlights versus a full log talking about every title. So for me, I found that my favorite way to reflect after finishing a series has been to write down a concise little message of my thoughts and share them in my Instagram stories, which is what I've been doing for the past year and a half. On my Instagram account, I save all my logs and reviews in my story highlights by month. So for example, in July, this is what some of my reviews looked like. So I'm able to get my thoughts down and share them and then move on to my next read. So then at the end of the month, it's stressful for me to try to uniformly go through each series, especially for series that I really disliked reading. I don't even want to have to recall my bad experience of reading those series. So if you're interested in seeing more of my specific thoughts on any of the series I don't talk about in this video, that's where you'll be able to find those past reviews as well as my reviews for the series I'm currently reading throughout the month. So I'll go ahead and get into a quick overview. So for the 18 series I read in July, I'll just break them into four categories. So did not enjoy, it was okay, I enjoyed it, and I really enjoyed it. So starting with did not enjoy, Red Hot Revenge, a manhwa series, I did not like it at all. Anyway, I'm falling in love with you. This is one that's getting an English print release next year, and I wanted to read some of it to see if it would be one I want to collect physically, and I did not enjoy it. It was not for me at all. Two series that I thought were just okay, Itadakimasu Wakoi no Aji and Honey So Sweet. I was really surprised. I thought I was going to like Honey So Sweet more than I did. There were some parts that I did like, and... I did like the two main characters, but even liking the two main characters, they both did really irritating things throughout the series. There were a lot of side characters that I found annoying and a lot of the drama throughout the series I also found annoying. So unfortunately, it was not really for me, despite liking the main characters and liking parts of the story. The series that I enjoyed, Farewell Upon a Blank Page, Do You Still Take Me For Better or Worse? This one was an infidelity read that just really sucked me in. I was really surprised how I just got hooked. I did enjoy my read of it, but this series hasn't ended yet, so depending on how it ends, I might hate it or I might like it quite a bit, so we'll see. Dance, Dance, Dancer, Restart, I Hear the Sunspot, Please Be My First Boyfriend, Since When Do Guys Find Divorcees Attractive, Dr. Stone, do Ra Ra Ra, so the main story, the Psycho arc, the Yellow Scarves arc, and the Redollars arc. So I enjoyed all of those, and then the series that I really enjoyed were Love of Kill, 
Kimi no Koi. That's one I really like, and this volume was so sad, and I cannot wait for volume five so I can see where things go from where it left off. Shoujo Kon, Risei o Sutete Doke o Daku, and Tokyo Revengers. So again, if you want to see any more of my detailed thoughts on any of these, you can find them in my Instagram story highlights. And then the three series I'm going to highlight, they're not just my three favorite reads of the month, but the series I feel like talking about. So for July, Love of Kill, Do Ra Ra Ra, and Dr. Stone. So I'll start with Love of Kill. This is a Jose series that I really like. There are a lot of crime elements as it follows an assassin and a bounty hunter. And there are other criminal organizations that come into play. So I reread volumes 8 to 11 to refresh my memory before getting into the newest volume. And I really liked volume 12, which is no surprise as I really like this series. But I just find the story so complex as it has been gradually revealing details about the character's past to reveal their motivations. Volume 11 revealed some of Ring Ha's traumatic past and then Volume 12 had content that expanded on earlier parts of the series. Honestly, I really wish I had just reread the whole series from Volume 1 before reading volume 12 because it really shook things up, but now I'm just going to plan to do a full reread of this series before volume 13 comes out. Ring call. The next series, Do Ra Ra Ra. This was a buddy read I did with Dragon Ball Zoe. And I had a blast chatting and sending panels back and forth of parts we liked or things we found weird and creepy. So Do Ra 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 is a shonen series that follows a bunch of very different people in Ikebukuro ranging from high schoolers to adults, all having some kind of ties to gang activity in the city. All of the characters have really odd and strange things about them, and the whole story has a bit of a creepy vibe, which I liked, and Selty, and... Shinra are my favorite characters. I had watched season one of the anime years ago and finally got around to reading it. I read volumes one to four of the main story, one to three of the Psycho arc, one to three of the Yellow Scarves arc, and then volumes one to seven of the Re Dollars arc. And I enjoyed them. I felt like the first 10 volumes are pretty close to the anime content, and I think I actually prefer the anime over the manga because of the anime art style and music and voice cast. It just really adds a lot to the dark tone of the story, but I really liked the dollars arc. I haven't watched any of the anime that covers the content from this arc, but I liked that there were more characters introduced, including assassins and Yakuza. And I also really liked the new art style and character design starting with this arc. So the artist changed between the first 10 volumes and the start of this arc. So while I didn't dislike the earlier art style, I do prefer the newer art style but this series is ongoing, so I'll be continuing in this arc as the volumes release.
And then lastly, Dr. Stone. This is a shonen adventure series that follows the survivors of a worldwide disaster that turned every human to stone. So I read volumes one to six in June, and then in July, I continued from volume seven to volume 26, finishing the series. So this is one I had a little bit of mixed feelings about because there were sections I really liked and characters I really liked, but then there were sections of the story I really did not care for and some of the character designs I really disliked. I will say though that I did like the ending. I know that's something I've heard a lot of people complain about. I feel like if I had been reading the series as the volumes released or as the chapters were releasing, it might have been a really jarring ending just because the last volume has a bit of a different vibe from the rest of the series. But I felt like it was logical and understandable how it fit into the story. My favorite character was Senku and then next was Bakuya. I really loved their enthusiasm and positive attitudes. I really liked the first third of the story when most of the focus was on exploration and discovery and survival. I liked all of the little science segments where they explained in a fun way what they were doing and how it all worked. That's something I was worried about before starting the series that the science sections would be boring or just feel like info drops, but they were written into the chapters in a really fun way and did not feel jarring to me at all. I'm kind of glad I didn't get into the series until it was completed because I enjoyed binge reading it. I feel like if I had been reading as the volumes released, I probably would have had parts I got confused or just forgot who certain characters were. But overall, I did enjoy reading this series and I'm looking forward to watching the anime soon. So those were my highlights from July and then that list and overview of the rest of my reads. So right now it's already, I think, three weeks into August when I'm recording this. So I already have read most of my August TBR, but I'll put up what my August TBR was at the start of the month. So a bunch of my pre-ordered new release volumes and then a couple buddy reads. So for now, I'm planning to do this kind of format moving forward. So I'll do the same for my August reading log, a quick overview, and then I'll choose a few series I want to highlight and talk about. And hopefully this will work for me and also be enjoyable for you to watch. And we'll see how it goes. But thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again soon in another video.